Sean, Lewis, great to see you. We've got to start with Wednesday. I mean, how did it feel then, the European exit for both of you? And how does it feel now, Sean, if we start with you? Um, yeah, obviously it's disappointing, I think. Um, yeah, I think we'll probably look at it in a few different ways. Um, you work so hard to get in that position and then sort of the hand we've been dealt over the last few months has probably stopped with having a real good go at it. I think there's games where I think if we were able to probably change players, we would have got better results, I would say. And I, I know it's easy to say that, but um, yeah, I think deep down we, we do believe that. But it's, um, yeah, it was a great experience and um, something we want to do a lot more of in the future. Louis, how did it feel at full time for you? When, when, when they realised that full time was like gone at St James's anyway? It was a bit down, to be fair, um, especially for me and the team. Um, we obviously wanted to get through to the next round, but obviously we fell short, so got to try and go again and get it for next season. Like you're both saying, though, I mean, when the group was drawn, the group of death, as it was termed, few people were given Newcastle a chance. What impression do you think Newcastle is a club but Newcastle as a city has left on the Champions League and on Europe? Um, I think obviously it's a great place to play football. So I think the teams that have came here have experienced a great atmosphere and um, yeah, sort of a great match day experience. I think we also went away and the away games, the atmospheres have been amazing as well. And I think our away fans have, have added to that. And um, yeah, I think anytime you get to play football up here, especially night time and in Europe, it's always going to be really special. And um, yeah, it's just slightly disappointing we couldn't give them a bit more of a, a longer go at it, um, whether that be Champions League or in the Europa League, but um, it's all learning. It's, it's still a pretty young group. Um, and yeah, like I said, we know there's going to be chances to get back there in the future, so we've got to make sure that this experience wasn't wasted and um, yeah, get back there as soon as possible. Like you said, it's, it's, it's left you with some pretty decent individual memories, team memories as well. I mean, Louis, you know, the youngest Englishman to... Uh, have an assist for a Premier League club. That's not bad when you think of the English lads who have played for Premier League clubs in the Champions League. How does that sound to a 17-year-old? Uh, it's a great feeling, to be fair, um, especially seeing some of the names on the list like for the assists, like Theo yeah. Walcott and stuff like that. It's a great feeling for me and my family. Yeah, I mean, uh, for you as well, Sean, there's, there's been some decent memories that moment against PSG. Are these those some of the memories that you're going to remember, not just in football, but some of the best memories that you've had in your life as well? Yeah, I think so. I think it's probably something where those moments are the ones you look back on in probably 20, 30 years' time and you're, you're able to tell people you were a part of sort of a special night and people probably weren't going to remember the whole run, so at least there was sort of a few um, yeah, sort of magical moments along the way, not just for me, but for the team and um, sort of the other local players. But, um, yeah, I think if you offered majority of uh, would you rather go through or would you rather have had one good night I think it's it's an easy answer so it's um, yeah it's one of them where you, we're going to look back on it but as of right now it's not it's not sort of they're not the that's not the night we're thinking about it's more the the campaign as a whole and what we maybe could have done better and um, yeah but like I said it's a it's a learning experience and we'll have to get back in those situations in order for it to um, to be worthwhile. I mean, the, the gaffer's said already this week, he, he wants you to use this pain as, as motivation. Does it feel like that? Is that the right way to look at it? Do you reckon, Sean? I mean, you're not going to disagree, I imagine, with Eddie. <laughs> no, <laughs> whatever he says is right. Yeah. Um, no, I think we'll have to, I think there's only one way to look at it and you've got to try and turn the negative into a positive. And um, if you dwell on it in, in this game for too long, then sort of a bad week or sort of getting knocked out becomes a bad month and then a bad few months and then suddenly um, what was sort of a little negative in the season can can become a whole lot bigger and it's it's our job as a team to make sure that doesn't happen and um, there's still a long, long way to go and ultimately we want to be playing in those competitions every season so we can use that pain as a as a motivator to, to get back in and around the top four and I suppose every sort of negative has a silver lining. I mean, we're going to probably get a little bit more rest which is... Um, might be what's needed in a way. Um, you know, like I said, if we can put together a run, we're still right in the mix in the in the Premier League. So there's no reason why we can't um, yeah, achieve a goal and, and get right back in the top four. Well, that was Wednesday. Let's park it and, and move on from the Champions League. Now, I mean, today, you are both back here at the academy. What were your first memories of this place, Louis? 
Um, my first memories, probably coming here at about under seven mm. with some of my teammates from boys club level. Um, just remember playing on the Astro turf outside, playing some little small side game. Yeah, Sean, what about you? Can you remember back that far? <laughs> I was going to say, um, <laughs> seems a long time ago now. I still laugh because my first ever session here was with one of the masseurs now, Barry, so sort of gone full circle that he was the, the, the well, my first coach in my first session here and now it's sort of still with him every day. It's so special. Um, yeah, it seems like a long time ago. Though. And uh, I need to ask you something. How come you don't have a room? Because there, there is a Lewis Miley room. But there's not a Sean Longstaff room, as far as I've found. Oh, what, how do you feel about this? I know, don't. We've only, we've only got so long. I can, I'll bang on about it for the next 15 minutes. Um, no, nah, like I said, it's. I think, to be fair, for what he's done, he's probably one of the the specialist talents we've had come through the academy um, in a long, long time. And um, yeah, he, he deserves it. And to be fair, for the start he's had in the Premier League and in Europe, he's. Uh, Fully deserving of it. I was going to say, like, it's a, it's a dream for any Newcastle lad, for any North East lad, I suppose, to pull on a Newcastle United shirt, Louis. So what, what's, what on earth has the last six or seven months been like for you? It's been a crazy few months, to be fair. Um, obviously, we, we never wanted all these injuries, but um, I've been grateful for the opportunity, really, off the, the gaffer and the staff, really, to trust us in the games that I've played in, yeah. especially coming up against some of the players that I have in the Champions League, like Mbappé and players like that. Do you remember the first time you laid eyes on Lewis Miley, Sean, or not? And what were your kind of first thoughts of him when you first saw him play? Uh, I think I probably remember just watching him in an academy game. Um, probably for the under 18s, he used to go down and watch on a Saturday, and yeah. instantly you sort of took to him. He's obviously a good size, so you notice him, and then you realise how he can, like, he can play as well. And um, yeah, I remember one of the first sessions he came up with, where he would have been 16. and. I remember being 16 and being so nervous, but he's just sort of a really nice lad and he lets his football do the talking and um, he sort of gained everyone's respect in that way. He's not loud about it. He's not um, arrogant with it for how good he is. He could easily be, be the other way, but fortunately for us, he's not. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's, it's great to watch him play and um, you forget how young he is at 17. It's pretty scary how good he is. All right, I'm going to flip it back around. And it's Christmas time, so you know it's good to be nice to each other. <laughs> do, do you remember, Louis, when you kind of like, obviously you know Sean's come through the account. Yeah. Did you look up to him? Were you influenced by Sean? Oh, it's all right to say no if you were, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. so go ahead anyway. <laughs> nah, yeah, definitely I was influenced by like Sean and Elliot and stuff like that. I see how far Sean's came and what he's done for the team. Like It's been really good, to be honest. Um, like see what like what like I said, what Sean's done. Like I'd love to take go into his steps and keep following him and seeing what he achieves as well. So what Sean Longstaff traits do you kind of apply? Because I've heard people say like Lewis. I mean the gaffer said it before. Lewis watches players intently in training and he kind of learns from them very very quickly. So what do you learn from Sean Longstaff, both on and off the pitch as well? Um, he's a really good team player. Like say if someone's like. Heads down, he always gets them back up and he loves everyone to be happy and loves everyone to be around the team all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's been a few players like, I think Tripp said you were the future of Newcastle. Bruno said you were amazing in an interview the other week. What's it like to kind of hear your teammates talk about you like that? And then Longy obviously talk in the glowing references that he was before about you as well. Um, it's, it's quite good, yeah. It's like, especially coming from the types of players like Sean and Tripps and Bruno and stuff like that. It's really uh, promise and hopefully I can keep pushing on. You kind of alluded to it a bit before, Sean, but do you sometimes forget that Lewis is, is 17 or not like around the dressing room and around training? Yeah, I think we've got, we've got a good little group at the sort of front of the bus. There's me, Dummy, Tino and Lou, and then we're talking and then sometimes like you ask him, like, oh, Lou, what was it like when you think he's not even old enough to go on holiday there? <laughs> like, it's, it's like, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. And then you watch him go on the pitch and like, you think he's, you think he's been doing it for years and then, um, no, like I said, I could sit here all day and tell you how good he is, but the thing for us as a group which we probably like most about him is how humble he is and um, he wants to learn, he wants to listen and um, there's probably times where he wants to tell her to shut up or leave him alone or, or, just, or just let him be, but he never sort of, um, he never shows it and yeah, like I said, we're, he's in a great place with the manager and the staff and he's got the right people to um, yeah, hopefully take his game forward, but if the first sort of 
few months in the first team of everything to go by, we've got a yeah, top player on my hands. I know he's only 17, but any nicknames so far? I mean, there needs to be in a squad, doesn't there? <laughs> Even if you're young or not, there's a look, so there's definitely something <laughs> No, I'll stick, for Lou, we'll stick with Lou for now on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Keep me PG on camera anywhere. Um, with having both of you here, you know, obviously Newcastle's had some famous, famous families come through the club and, you know, gone on to great success, the Charlton's, the Milburn's, etc. The Longstaff's as well, now the Miley's too. Um, how much do the families speak? Do the families speak at all? Is there any advice being passed from, you know, your dad to Lewis's dad, Sean, or not? I'll be honest, but I don't, I, I'll probably say no. I think, um, I think probably the families are just probably proud of us both and, and families stay out of it. And I think once you get to a certain level, as probably parents don't want to hear, but I think you get to a certain level and there's, there's not a lot they can then sort of teach you. You've got to then leave it to the... Um, yeah, the managers and the, the coaches and, um, but yeah, like I said, in terms of me and my brother and him and his brothers, brothers, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of sort of chat and we can, we've had similar experiences and, um, yeah, like I said, it's uh, only good for the area that we can hopefully bring more young players through. There's quite a few, few Miley's as well. There's three here at the club. Yeah. There's one at Sunderland, but yeah. <laughs> we won't necessarily talk about that. Um, settle a debate for us, please. Lewis, who, who is the best Miley on the football the pitch? Yeah, well, who I would you say? I can't see me. Um, <laughs> um, I'd probably say the, the littlest one looks promising, to be fair. Yeah, um, yeah he looks like a good little player, and two other brothers are good players as well. So yeah. I think there'll be a fight if I probably say who who I think will be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start a fight between the Marley family. I absolutely don't. Look, look, whoever ends up, you know, maybe emulating you and going on to play for Newcastle United, they might be captained by Sean Longstaff. We were in a press conference with the Gaffer the other week, and Sean, he was talking about how you go to under 18 games, go to under 21 games, and you've got those sort of attributes to be a Newcastle United captain in future. What's that like to hear for a, a Geordie boy like yourself that? You've gone and played for them. You've had magical moments in the Champions League, etc. But you could go on and captain the club. Yeah, it's um, obviously something I'd probably never really, never really thought would happen. Um, I think the manager bangs, or tries to bang it into us every day that there's a leader in there, and um, probably to be a bit more, I say vocal, but also like probably believe in myself a little bit more that I, that I can lead. I think it's sometimes hard when you've got a group of of so many leaders, you don't, want to, you don't want too many sort of cooks in there, you don't want too many people shouting messages and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's all, really, it's all really nice to hear and if anything just gives me more confidence to, to keep doing what I'm doing and um, yeah, if there's a way to get the last little few percent out and, and improve my game even more, then um, yeah, the manager's going to do that and, and I think that's what he's trying to do. Can you see it in the future, you pulling on the armband? Um, to, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't really try and look too far ahead. I think um, it sounds a bit cliche, but we sort of say every day as a group, and especially the coaches, like your playing career goes so fast that f for me it's about enjoying every single day. And um, it sounds a bit boring, but it's, it's, it's sort of the truth. And I try and enjoy, enjoy that week or that day as much as I can and um, whatever will happen in the future. But if one day I, I can be the captain of the club, amazing. But um, as long as I'm here and I'm playing and enjoying it, then that's most important for me. The, the gaffer's clearly had a huge influence on you know, every part of the football club around the city as well. In what way has he had an influence on, on you, Lewis? Apart from obviously giving you your Premier League, your Champions League debut, what sort of influence, in what way has he, has he had that influence on you? Um, I think him and all of his staff have been brilliant with us like, ever since I've went up to the top and trained. Um, obviously, I've been grateful for them opportunities that he's gave us and hopefully there's lots more to come. So starting to round things off for both of you, what do you both now think represents success for Newcastle United this season? Lewis, starting with you. Um, I'd say obviously just everyone working to the best of the ability really and everyone pushing to try and get the best out of us. Sean, sure. what about you? Yeah, I think um, there's probably a few things. I think we've, if we can go on and have a good cup run and I put myself in a good position in the, the Carabao Cup to um, have, another, have another good go at that. But I think there's still a lot of football left in the league. And um, yeah, we've sort of, <laughs> I say, mapped out, planned out. We know that we can still finish in the top four and um, it might even be the top five gets in the Champions League. So there's definitely um, no quit from us. 
Um, there's definitely a long, a long, long way to go in the season. So I think if we need to get back playing Champions League football, and um, yeah, I think if you can bring a cup here, we've said it probably every year for the last however many years, you, you're going to be remembered forever. So I think those are the two big aims of the team. And now the European football's out the way. That journey sort of done. That it probably allows them more time to focus on those things. So if um, yeah, we can achieve them, achieve them things. I think it's been a, a successful season. Absolutely, and to win a cup could be the FA Cup, and if it is going to be the FA Cup, there's Sunderland to get past the small matter. Uh, what's it like for two Newcastle boys to have Sunderland in the FA Cup? Lewis, have you have you chatted to your younger brother about this much? Or uh, not? not not much to be honest. Um, I think he's still on the Newcastle side of supporting us, but <laughs> he plays for Sunderland. Um, yeah, when I saw the draw, I was buzzing and. Hopefully it won't beat them to push on. I can't wait round. for his next training session. <laughs> <laughs> After this interview goes out, that'll be cracking. Um, Sean, what, what was your reaction when you got Sunderland? Uh, I just remember lying on the city and um, I remember my phone just started going nuts and automatically you think the worst. I was like, oh no, what's happened? Like, something wrong. Uh, and then sort of in a group chat with my dad, my brother and one of our friends and he said, oh, Sunderland away. I thought they were joking, like never in a million years like we were going to get that draw, we'd probably somehow end up getting Barcelona if the ones we've had this year. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a massive game. I think it's a, it's funny, we've always sort of not struggled in that round of the cup, but the last few years hasn't been great. And if anything, it just magnifies the importance of the game and um, you need to get through the first round to, to go on a good run. So um, yeah, we'll obviously be giving that game the utmost sort of respect and importance because it's not happened for a long, long time and everyone wants to beat them.